Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is going to be on the big hormone switch. We're going to be talking about why some women get their hormones turned into male hormones and some men, they start turning their male hormones into female hormones and what is happening underneath the hood and what you can do about it. It's not good if you're a woman and you're turning into a man because your testosterone is getting jacked up. That tends to drive other hormonal issues, infertility, polycystic ovarian syndrome, hertzuism with excessive hair, and same with the men. The men have the testosterone going downstream to the estrogen that causes the gynecomastia, that causes mood issues. Again, all of these things can cause skin breakouts, excessive fat, right? All of these things, the man boobs, like I mentioned. So men have about 10 times more testosterone than females, right? That's what makes men, men, right? They have the the deeper voice, uh, facial hair, the muscle mass, the bone structure, right? That's what drives it. Hormones drive growth and certain areas of the body to shift in a different pattern, right? Estrogen and progesterone cause fat deposition on certain areas. Of course, the cycle of it creates fertility and, and such. But again, men, testosterone gets driven to estrogen when this enzyme here, aromatase, is upregulated. So aromatase, when insulin levels are high, will take male testosterone and bring it downstream to estrogen. So if we go look at kind of what a, a hormonal cascade looks like, we have cholesterol here. Cholesterol can go downstream over here into progesterone. It can go over here into, let me just back up one step. Cholesterol is here. It can go here into pregnenolone. And then from here, it can go into progesterone. Making sure you guys can see. And then it can go over here into DHEA. And then from DHEA, it can go downstream here into testosterone. Or it can go downstream here into estrogen. And we have this switch right here. This is the switch where aromatase can take testosterone over to estrogen. And again, insulin resistance can drive that significantly. Now there's other negligible sources of estrogen in the, in the environment that may drive that more, may increase the estrogen. Plastics may do it, uh, phytoestrogens and soy may do it. Uh, a lot of pesticides are estrogen-like as well. So that may drive that up even more because of the exogenous exposure, right? So again, there are other negligible sources there, but in general, insulin resistance, insulin will really drive this like here. And again, what's insulin? Insulin is a growth hormone. It's a storage growth hormone. Think of insulin as like the key to your front door. You turn that door open, you can go inside the house, maybe inside a closet, right? You can store your clothes. You can put uh, different things in your house in there for storage in your body. You put something in a cell, it's either gonna be there for storage, i.e. fat, or it's there for fuel and it's there to be burnt up. So the goal is we put food into our cells, glucose or other nutrition into our cells, and we want it to be burnt up, right? We wanna create a signal in our, inside our body, inside our cell that says, things are good, there's not a lot of stress. You don't have to worry about saving or storing for a rainy day, so to speak, right? We have plenty on file. We're gonna just put things in that cell and burn it up. That allows us to stay lean. That allows us to keep muscle on because muscle is very metabolically active. So it's like, it's that expensive car payment, right? So the first thing when debt starts to creep in, you get rid of the expensive payments if possible, right? So think of your body in that standpoint. Muscle goes when stress happens. So we wanna be able to use insulin, unlock that cell, put glucose in there and be able to utilize it for fuel like that. But if we're doing it too much and the cell starts becoming numb to it, it's gonna start storing a lot more of that fuel as fat and it's also gonna take and convert a lot of our hormones downstream to estrogen. Same thing with women. Women, these different enzymes here increase called 17-20-lyase and 17-hydroxylase. These enzymes are more active over here. So you see estrogen over here it'll actually convert it back down over here. Okay, this is your, these are your lyase enzymes here. And these can have effects on taking and increasing your 
male hormones, not so good. Hertzism is a big effect, right? You're gonna get a lot more hair. You can even grow a beard. You see that from time to time. Just Google image Hertzism. Again, you're also gonna be more moody ovarian cyst, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Uh, a lot of times they can affect your prolactin levels and it can throw off your cycle. You may even have amenorrhea because of the prolactin and because of the cycle dysregulation. Also what happens when we start having these enzymes upregulated here, it starts to increase LH. LH signals more hormonal activity and then that can drive more of the fecal cells to produce more estrogen. Estrogen can go downstream to testosterone, and then testosterone can go downstream even more to something called DHT, which can drive even more hair growth too. So you can get, this is even a stronger estrogen or a stronger testosterone here that can drive more hair growth and uh, potentiate testosterone even more. So in general, women turn into men with a lot of these enzymes being upregulated. What's the key component? Insulin resistance is driving it. Men turn into women, we get the increase in estrogen and such. What drives that? That's gonna be insulin resistance. So what can we do? On the supplement side, to help with the men issue, the males getting their testosterone into estrogen, we can take things such as chrysin is very helpful, uh, selenium and zinc. The key thing is get your carbohydrate levels in check. If you already have insulin resistance, get it down as low as possible. Get your blood sugar super stable. Healthy protein and fat at every meal. The only carbohydrates are gonna be vegetables until you get your blood sugar rock solid stable. What does that mean? Get your fasting insulin below five, between two and five is a pretty good uh, rule of thumb. And take your glucose tolerance test with food. See how your body fluctuates from a fasting state to three to four hours after a meal. You should never go above 140. You should be back below 100 within three hours and back under 120 within two hours. That's a good response because the higher your blood sugar goes, the more insulin that you are spitting out in between. So good rule of thumb, higher your blood sugar goes, more insulin, more insulin, more of this aromatase, more of the 1720 lyase or the alpha hydroxylase. So we really wanna utilize that. Supplements are gonna be chrysin. Uh, for the females, we can do things like calcium, uh, or I should say for the men, we can also do calcium deglucurate to help lower the estrogen. We can also do DIM. We can take more cruciferous vegetables as well. And then again, other things for the women too, um, we can do things like milk thistle, we can support the liver, we can do sulfur-based amino acids, right? Cysteine, glutamine, glycine, those are all helpful things. We can do insulin sensitizing compounds like chromium, this can be done with men and women. Chromium, magnesium, uh, cinnamon, gymnema, these are all things to help lower insulin and make our body more sensitive to it so we need less of it to unlock the cells and get the fuel in there to be able to burn it up. Uh, let's see, diet recommendations, get your carbohydrates below 50 grams. That's a pretty good rule of thumb for the most part between 20 and 50 net carbs. Uh, net carbs are gonna be carbs minus fiber. So in general, if you're doing a cup of broccoli, there's about six or seven grams of carbs there. Three are carbs, four are fiber. So you gotta subtract it. So again, if you're doing eight cups of really good green vegetables a day, you should be pretty darn good. You probably won't be over 30 or 40 in general. So supplementation, uh, zinc and selenium is also very helpful as well. And for women, I mean, the key thing is it's all of the insulin sensitizing compounds that I mentioned, and a lot of it's the dietary strategies. Those are gonna be the really big things. The men, it's gonna be all of the estrogen metaboli metabolizers, the cruciferous vegetables, the calcium deglucurate, the diendol methane, the DIM, the sulfur-based amino acids, a lot of the um, support on the detoxification pathways, the milk thistle, the silymarin, the dandelion root, the fringe tree, the artichoke, all those are really, really helpful. And then lifestyle recommendations, get your sleep dialed in, right? If you aren't getting enough sleep, you'll wake up in an insulin resistant state. Lots of studies, you can Google it, where they've taken people, uh, they've taken college kids, they've deprived their sleep, cut their sleep in half to four to five hours, healthy kids, non-diabetic, and within two weeks they had pre-diabetes based on their blood sugar being over 110 because of the blood sugar being jacked up from their sleep, which increases cortisol, which then increases your blood sugar. Hope that helps today. Again, the take home message is get your insulin levels dialed in by choosing the right carbs, get your protein and fat dialed in. Make sure you subscribe if you're enjoying these videos and share them. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with friends and family that could really enjoy it and click below. If you need to schedule a consult with myself or my associates, click below so we can work on helping to prevent this hormone switch from happening to you. And again, this is Dr. J here signing off. Hope you enjoy the video.
Take care. Thanks.